What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes and today we're editing nighttime urban photography towards a futuristic style. So I'm sure you've come across a style that looks like pulled out from Cyberpunk, Blade Runner or the Streets of Coruscant in Star Wars where all the neon signs are highlighted as well as the colors towards that neon glowish gloomy style. You can see a lot of purples, a lot of blues, a lot of yellows and some mist mixed in there. So this style is pretty unique, so we're gonna edit it in Photoshop. But before that, I'm gonna show you the profiles that I'm gonna base this edit around. And the first one is Lucan Kutz, and he's a Canadian photographer that goes out at night in a rainy or snowy day and takes these amazing photographs with the reflections and all these colors are added in post. And the other is Technometry, and this is a page that is not a photographer, it's more of an account that features a lot of content from other creators or digital creators or concept designers. And we can see that these colors are pretty fantastic towards a futuristic style. So it's the style that we're gonna edit today. So let's jump into Photoshop and edit this, guys. Okay, so in order for this style to really pop up, we need night urban photography, particularly in big cities. Maybe it could be from Asia, like Seoul, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Osaka, or maybe a city like London or New York. We can see these kinds of city centers with a lot of ads, a lot of high buildings, and very crowded. Now, in this photograph, the rain obviously adds to the dramatism and to the reflection. That's a little hint, maybe a snowy day or a rainy day will be perfect. And in this case, although I did go to Sibuya Crossing last year, I didn't take any photograph with a central subject. So in this case, this isn't my photograph. I took it from Uplash. This is Fred Revert. You can go and check this image out to practice yourselves. So let's get on to it. So this edit is going to be divided in three parts. First of all, we're going to get the coloring right and the style in particular. Then we're going to add some neon effects some haze and finally some smoke. So let's get into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate the layer so we have a backup and something to compare the final result with. Then we're gonna go up to filter and camera raw. You can also use shift control A to open up. And camera raw gives us the basic tools of Lightroom CC so we can edit the colors and everything from there. Okay guys, so the first thing I'm gonna do is move the tint up all the way up to the 70 so we get an image that's a lot more pink and the temperature we're going to pull it a bit down just to get a lot more blues in. Next up the highlights are going to go all the way down to make the image a bit more flat around to minus 54. Next the shadows are going to go a bit up so we can get a lot more detail in the blacks. Whites are going to go down as well just a little bit so it's a lot less harsh and the blacks just a little bit so we can recuperate a bit of the blacks that we lost left in the shadows. And the clarity we're going to go down to a minus 15 to make the image a lot less sharp and the haze is going to go up to between 20 or to 30 so right around there next we're going to click on split toning and here we're going to add a tone for the highlights and a tone in the shadows so with highlights i'm going to go to a 290 which gives us this little purplish pink color we can see it over here and add the saturation around to 30. Meanwhile, the shadows are going to go with a more of a teal color, so we're going to go up to 205 and the saturation around 20. As we can see, this image is adopting all the colors of the style that we want to achieve. And the final thing that we're going to do in Camera Raw is add a vignette. And in this case, it's going to be a minus 30, just around there to make a little more emphasis on the center and hit OK. We can see what we've done with the coloring and it's looking very good. Okay, next up, I'm going to add a curves mask and the curves, I'm just going to edit just a little simple S just around there to make the highlights pop a bit more and the midtones of the blacks a bit darker. Now, if you want the blacks to be a little more grayish, you can pull up this last spot right around there. Okay, looks pretty good. Okay, next up, I'm gonna add a new layer and rename it as Haze. Now in this one, we're gonna go to our brush tool, set the size of the point a bit big, right and around there, depending on the image, it's gonna be bigger and set the flow to 40%. And then with Alt in our keyboard, we can select a color. In this case, I'm gonna select the pink and color the parts of the image that are pink. And then I'm gonna select the blue and I'm gonna color again, the colors of the image that are towards that color. Then the blending mode is gonna be a screen mode and we're gonna pull the opacity down to a 30%. Now I've just added a little haze into the image with the colors of the background. So it's looking pretty good, let's move on. Okay, next up I'm gonna add a new layer, Control Shift N, that adds a new layer, I'm gonna rename it as Neon 1. So in this case we're gonna add some neon effect to the ads or the letters that aren't lit up, so it gives us a more of a cyberpunk feel. So let's get into it. Now with a pencil we're gonna create neon tubes around all the objects that we want to highlight, so in this case there's this advertisement of DHC that doesn't have any glow to it and maybe some framing in other parts of the image. So in this case we're gonna start off with this one, 
with, by clicking with the right click we can create straight lines and by holding it down we can create some curves and once we finish with control and we click the background we can deselect okay so i'm gonna add a neon frame around this advertisement just around here and then we're gonna go down to and then we're gonna go to our brush tool and select the size of the point to a size that's comparable to the size of the letter so in this case i'm gonna use four the flow is gonna be a hundred and we're gonna go down to our pen tool right click stroke path be sure to use the tool as brush and simulated pressure to be unchecked so we hit ok and then with backspace we can delete the path and now we have a little glowing object now we're going to double click the neon layer we're going to go to overlay color mark it and hit the color to the color that we want in this case i want this aqua color i'm going to set the opacity down to around the 25 then i'm going to go to inner glow set the blending mode to linear dodge the opacity to 67 then the elements source is going to be center and the choke and the size is going to be around 15 just around there next up the outer glow now in outer glow we're going to set the blending mode to linear dodge again set the opacity down to a 50 percent and in elements the spread is going to be just a two percent and the size is going to be a 25 and set the color to the color that you've stated before just around there hit ok and there we have it a little neon object so we, so i'm going to add another one just around here and i'm going to do the same thing right click stroke path hit ok then we're going to delete the path and then we're going to select the neon layer one copy layer style and paste it onto the second layer and there we have it uh, we've just copied the style of the neon effect and next up we're going to do the same with any object that we want to light up so i'm just going to fast forward it So once we finish with that, we can group them all. We can select them with Shift and Control G, and this group is going to be the neon effects. And finally, we're going to add a new layer. This one's going to be renamed as Smoke. And then we're going to go to our brush tool and use this brush tool with the shape of smoke. We can download all these kinds of pencils or brushes from internet. So in this case, this is a brush tool, and I'm going to set the flow down to 40% and start coloring away. This is going to add to the dramatism of the image just a little bit. Then I'm going to put down the opacity just a bit, just around there. Then I'm going to put the fill down just around to 40% or so 45 around there. Then I'm going to add a coloring mask and with black I'm going to erase some parts of the smoke to the parts where I don't want it. Maybe around this subject I want it to be more clear. So I'm going to delete it with a bit more flow and we can see what we've done with the brush tool and it just adds a little more dramatism. And that's it guys, finally I'm going to group these layers and show you the before and after so this is the before it's a very good image and then this is the effect that we've applied so it looks pretty good so it's a combination of the color gridding the neon effect the brush tools that give this photograph the style of the futuristic vibe that we're looking into and i've gone ahead and color graded and edited the same way some images that i took in japan and that's about it so that's it for this tutorial guys, I know it was a pretty complex and extensive technique with a lot of steps but just practice several times and I'm sure you will master it. Remember to tag me on Instagram in any post that you make using this style, I really love to see what you come up to. So if you did like the video can you please give it a like, it really makes a difference, show your support and consider subscribing, hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload the next video. I'm Tony Fuentes, cheers to all of you and see you in the next one.